And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Thank you for sharing with us this very special time of year in a very special country. It has been a Bavarian Christmas and we also wish you a very Merry Christmas and Auf Wiedersehen. Thank you for joining us today on the Joy of Music. We have brought to you Christmas from Bavaria, featuring Diane Bish, the First Lady of the Organ, with special guests Shirley Close and Christine Capote. Diane Bish and the Joy of Music wish to thank Lufthansa German Airlines for their support in making this program possible. Today's special is made in cooperation with the Trinity Broadcasting Network. From all of us on the Joy of Music, Merry Christmas and God's richest blessing in the coming new year. This Christmas, EWTN presents a holiday classic the whole family can enjoy. A Time to Remember is a touching drama of triumph brought through the gift of music and the miracles of the season. It's a story of innocence and faith and what we can give God in return. A Time to Remember, this Christmas on the Eternal Word Television Network. EWTN, live truth, live Catholic. Family, a prayer that we pray together is a powerful prayer. So please pray together with me our EWTN family prayer. Today we pray for the church in Asia. Almighty God and Father, we praise you for your marvelous works. The church of Asia is small but fervent, and we pray that you protect and bless them. Let a new Pentecost enliven the entire continent of Asia. Do not let them be deprived of the treasures of the gospel, but bring them into the church where they may find life and salvation. Let none of them be lost, O Lord, but send missionaries and use EWTN to bring them the hope of the gospel. We ask this through Christ our Lord, amen. takes away the sins of the world. Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who are weighed down from of old by slavery beneath the yoke of sin may be set free by the newness of the long-awaited nativity of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king, he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him, the Lord our justice. Therefore, the days will come, says the Lord, when they shall no longer say, as the Lord lives, who brought the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but rather, as the Lord lives, who brought the descendants of the house of Israel up from the land of the north, and from all the lands to which I banished them, they shall again live on their own land. Urbam Domini, Deoratias. Justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. Justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice and your afflicted ones with judgment. Justice 
He shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous deeds, and blessed forever be his glorious name. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son and he named him Jesus. Verbum Domini. Some years ago, Bishop Baker, our ordinary here in the Diocese of Birmingham brought the Chinacolo community here. They actually have their house near the Shrine of the Blessed Sacrament north of here, and the friars offer mass for their community once a week, and occasionally they will come to the shrine for mass as well. And I was speaking with one of the young men, and he was telling me that he was not Catholic, but then he came to enter the church, and what the reason that he did was that the first time that he went to the Shrine of the Blessed Sacrament and he saw the beauty of the architecture and the art, he saw the beauty of the liturgy, he heard the beauty of the sisters singing, he knew that's what he wanted. He knew that was the truth, that was what he wanted. And so he came to embrace the Catholic faith because of that experience of beauty. Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI spoke of something similar. Uh, this was into, when he was a cardinal, 
And he said, for me, an unforgettable, for me, an unforgettable experience was the Bach concert that Leonard Bernstein conducted in Munich. I was sitting next to the Lutheran Bishop Hanselman. When the last note of one of the great cantatas triumphantly faded away, we looked at each other spontaneously, and right then we said, anyone who has heard this knows that the faith is true. The music had such an extraordinary force of reality that we realized no longer by deduction, but by the impact on our hearts, that it could not have originated from nothingness, but could only have come to be through the power of truth that became real in the composer's inspiration. And another time he said, I think the great music born in the church makes the truth of our faith audible and perceivable. In listening to all these works, we suddenly understand it is true. It is true. In fact, he said very beautifully that in Christian art, whether it's painted, statuary, musical art, architecture, heart and reason encounter one another, beauty and truth converge. So that's what we want for our faith, to enhance our faith, a beautiful place. And this, the structure of this church elevates our minds and our hearts to God the beauty of sacred music and art converge with the words of truth that we hear in the scriptures and they come together, they converge, they encounter one another and they lead us to faith. It is true, something that we embrace even more wholeheartedly in this experience. We are um, now in the season of the O Antiphons and this is a beautiful part of the closing part of the uh, Advent season. So from the 17th through the 23rd, we have these O antiphons. And already Boethius, 1500 years ago, referred to the O antiphons. And they were commonly used already in monasteries by the eighth century. So these are things 1500 or more years old and what they do is they take the sacred text of the messianic prophecies, especially from Isaiah. So we heard in the gospel today that Matthew, who's writing particularly to Hebrew people, he's saying all that this happened in the conception by the Holy Spirit, this took place to fulfill what Isaiah had prophesied. This is Isaiah's prophecy chapter 7, verse 14, that a virgin will be with child and he will be called Emmanuel, which means God is with us. So this is probably the most well-known of the Oantiphons that we know, that hymn that we sing, which is actually an English translation of the Oantiphons. And the choir, the Scola, will be singing this at the end of Mass. So get your Adoramus hymnals ready, number 301. And today we'll be doing verse 6, which is the old antiphon for today. And uh, each day has its own particular O antiphon. At the offertory today, they will be singing this ancient chant. And you hear in this ancient chant, so here's today's O antiphon the beginning of it. Oh, oh, oh Adonai. You hear in that, oh, this, this longing, this waiting, this seeking of God, if you will, comes out so beautifully in this chant. And the translation of that today, this is, comes from uh, the account of the event in the book of Genesis, but also from Isaiah 
chapter 33, verse 22. O come, O come, thou Lord of might, who to thy tribes, well, this is the uh, translation from the O come, O come, Emmanuel. O Lord of lords and leader of the house of Israel, who appeared to Moses in the bushes flaming fire and gave to him the law of Sinai, come to redeem us with stretched out arms. So this great one who gave the law to Moses, there's this plea for him to come. And Isaiah would prophesy, for the Lord is our judge, he is our ruler, he's our king, he will save us. It says, plea for him to come anew. We heard that in Jeremiah today as well, that no longer are we just going to speak about the liberation from Egypt, but now God's going to do something more wonderful, even more wonderful than that liberation that took place in Egypt in today's first reading that he refers to. Pope St. John Paul II in 1999 wrote a letter to artists, which is a beautiful, beautiful letter. Anyone who's involved in uh, artistic work in the church it would be a beautiful letter to read and to contemplate all that he has written there. And a couple of things that I wanted to uh, quote from that letter. Um, he says he's talking about the difference between the creator and the craftsman. So the creator brings things into existence out of nothingness. Well, that belongs to God alone. But then there is the craftsman who's given a little bit of that light of his wisdom, of the creator's wisdom, that enables him then in his work. He says the divine artist passes on to the human artist a spark of his own surpassing wisdom, calling him to share in his creative power. And so artists need to be more conscious of their gift. It's a gift God gives them to share in his creative power, to contemplate and give thanks to God in a hymn of praise. And whereas in the Old Testament we read that it was forbidden to represent God by graven or molten images, so sometimes there will be those who will accuse a church of going against the scriptures because of Deuteronomy 27, 15, not to make any image graven or molten image. But Pope John Paul II, he says, because God transcends every material represent, representation, yet in the mystery of the incarnation, the Son of God becomes visible in person. That's really what the work of artists is saying. God became man. He became visible, representable. He, he, he had a human face. And so we can see him. He had a face that speaks of the reality of the incarnation. And from this incarnation, there's been this flowering of beauty that draws its sap precisely from the mystery of the incarnation. So he says the church needs art in order to communicate the message entrusted to her by Christ. The church needs art. Art must make perceptible and as far as possible attractive the world of the spirit of the invisible, of God. It must therefore translate into meaningful terms that which is itself ineffable. <laughs> so God is spirit. We can't really communicate that truth completely, and yet in some way we can convey that truth through art. Art has a unique capacity to take one or other facet of the message and translate it into colors, shapes, and sounds, which nourish the intuition of those who look or listen. And so in the beauty of sacred music, the beauty of art, of architecture, there's this intuition that we experience 
something of God. The church, he said, also needs musicians. How many sacred works have been composed through the centuries by people deeply imbued with a sense of mystery. The faith of countless believers have been nourished by melodies flowing from the hearts of other believers, like this ancient chant. This flows from perhaps 1,500 years or more, but certainly since the eighth century, these rich chants, the faith of other believers that are contemplating these sacred messianic prophecies and trying to convey more deeply and richly what is, what is contained in that sacred text through the sacred music. In song, faith is experienced as vibrant joy, love, and confident expectation of the saving intervention of God. Isn't that true that, especially this season, that we especially remember fondly, we have fond memories of the Christmas carols that we sang, or maybe sang that maybe when you went Christmas caroling. I remember, especially during this time, when I went with Mother Angelica to Japan, looking to the possibility of a new foundation being opened there. And it was in December, and I was surprised to hear American Christmas carols in uh, going over the speakers. Uh, and there's something in these Christmas carols, there's, they're theologic, theologically sound, most of them at least, that are conveying, trying to convey something of this truth of God truly becoming man of the incarnation, that he became this child in a manger in order to save us. This call that these O antiphons have, come and save us, this longing of the centuries, this plea that we can hear in the O antiphons that now it's realized. And so we're drawing near to that time and we have especially the O antiphons at this time of the year. <laughs> Finally, again, from Pope St. John Paul II, and he quotes Dostoevsky's famous phrase, beauty will save the world. And he says, beauty is a key to the mystery and a call to transcendence. To call to something beyond ourselves, something greater than ourselves. That's what beauty invites us to, to this mystery that can't be completely expressed and yet in some way expresses it more richly than we can just with words. The artist, the poet, is able to convey something deeper, richer. He says, so beauty is a key to the mystery and a call to transcendence. It's an invitation to savor life and to dream of the future. That is why the beauty of created things can never fully, fully satisfy. It stirs that hidden nostalgia for God, which a lover of beauty like St. Augustine could express in incomparable terms. Late have I loved you, beauty, so old and so new. Late have I loved you. Artists of the world, may your many different paths all lead to that infinite ocean of beauty where wonder becomes awe, exhilaration, and unspeakable joy. The last thing that I wanted to say this morning comes from St. John of the Cross. He was a remarkable poet, perhaps one of the greatest poets in history. And he wrote a canticle based on the Song of Songs of King Solomon in the scriptures, which is a paraphrase of it, in which he spoke of here. I haven't, here it is, okay. In which he spoke of the bridegroom Christ and the soul's longing for Christ. So this is the song of the soul and the bridegroom. This is a couple of uh, canticles from that. And this is the bride speaking to the bridegroom, to Christ, the soul speaking to Christ. Quench my troubles, for no one else can soothe them. And let my eyes behold Behold you, for you are their light. 
and I will keep them for you alone, my eyes. Reveal your presence and let the vision and your beauty kill me, draw me to yourself. And I love this phrase of St. John of the Cross. Behold, the malady of love is incurable. The malady of love, the wound of love, this longing that we have for the beautiful one. Behold, the malady of love is incurable, except in your presence and before your face. Let us offer our petitions with firm confidence of being heard by God who cherishes us as his own. That our Holy Father may be blessed by the Mother of God with graces of humility and faith, and that, like Mary, he may magnify the Lord and rejoice in God our Savior. We pray to the Lord. Lord that the vocations God is giving to our youth may be fostered and supported by their families and friends, and that they may be imbued with total dedication to God. We pray to the Lord. Lord For the special needs and intentions of our EWTN employees and of their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord For those who have gone before us in faith, that through the intercession of Mary, gate of heaven, they may soon enter the, into the embrace of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord we recognize with joy that you, Lord, created us and that you guide us by your providence. In your unfailing kindness, support us in our prayer. Renew your life within us. Guard it and make it bear fruit for eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the glory and glory of his name, for our good and good of all the soul of the church. 
May the sacrifice to be offered to you, O Lord, make us acceptable to your name, that we may merit for all eternity to be the companions of Christ, by whose death our own mortality was healed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, plenis uceni et terra gloria tua, osana in excelsis, benedictus qui venit in nomine domini, osana in excelsis, To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. For all of those with us through EWTN, for their needs and intentions for which this Mass is offered. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. 
make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. History of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar and high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants, especially the benefactors of EWTN, who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Precepti salutaribus moniti et divina institutione formati, audemus dicere. Pater noster, qui es in genis, sanctifice tuum nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat volum tas tuum, 
Propitius pacem in diebus nostris, ur ope misericordiae tu iadiuti, era peccato simus semper liberi, era omni perturbatione securi, expectantes beatam spem, era adventum salvatoris nostri, Jesu Christi. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. On your stand. We told his Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. His name will be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. For those who cannot now receive Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, we offer the following prayer. O Jesus, thou hast given us in the Holy Eucharist thy body and blood to be our spiritual nourishment, through which we may have life everlasting. Would that I were able to receive thee this day in Holy Communion. I desire with all my heart to receive the living bread which comes down from heaven. O Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst enter under my roof. Say but the word, and my soul shall be healed. 
let me taste at least the sweetness of a spiritual communion. Come to me, Jesus, my Lord, my Master. Come and refresh my soul. Strengthen me that in union with thee I may do perfectly the heavenly Father's will. Let me never be separated from thee by sin. Soul of Jesus, sanctify me. Body of Jesus, save me. Blood of Jesus, wash me. Water out of the side of Jesus, purify me. Passion of Jesus, comfort me. O good Jesus, hear me. Hide me within thy sacred wounds. O sacred heart of Jesus, receive me. O immaculate heart of Mary, plead for me and love me. Amen. Let us pray. May we receive your mercy in the midst of your temple, O Lord, and show fitting honor to the coming solemnities of our redemption 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dominus Fabiscum. Et Was omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Oh, uh-huh.